So it is 6.30 in the morning. It is 36 degrees outside. And we want to turn on our mini splits like this that we have in the house. We have one of these aux and we have a premium brand in the living room. So we have different ways that we can do this. Right now, we have this 12 kilowatt inverter turned on and it is, let's see, it's actually using um, only 202 watts right now because it's already reached its um, temperature on uh, the living room that I have it set at. I turned it on like an hour ago. But in here we have this breaker and our breaker panel just for solar for the living room mini split. And that one is actually running off of that and off of this battery bank down here, which is 15.3 kilowatt hours of these EG4 LLs. And uh, I can also run my three and a half ton heat pump heater upstairs off of this as well. And the other way that I can do it is, this is at my door wall going out to my pool. I'm using the grid, just plugging it into a 110 volt plug. And that is running that one. And that is using probably about seven or 800 watts right now. The other way is I have these batteries down here, which are 12 volt batteries. And there's four of them and they're 150 amp hour, two kilowatt each. So that's eight kilowatt hours at 150 amp hours. And that is for plugged into there, that's a 12 volt inverter. This is a 48 volt inverter. And with that plugged in right there, just have to turn that on, hit the thermostat, and that'll be pumping out some heat here in just a few minutes. And then when the sun comes up, we actually have um, some solar panels, little 100 watt grape solar panels, eight of those hooked up to this one um, that we're testing to be able to run that mini split. That's the same exact one in the motorhome. So we're kind of testing that one out to see if we're going to use this inverter and those solar panels. We might need to use 10, but we're trying to get away with just 800 watts. And we could use two of these. 5.1 kilowatt hour, 100 amp hour um, server rack batteries in there. And that would be able to run that mini split um, with the solar and the battery bank 24 hours a day. So we can run it off of our 48 volt with it being directly wired into a panel. We can have it where it's a 110 volt plug where we can plug it in and we can plug this in either to the grid here in the house or we have outlets for our solar here all over the place. Uh, that's a solar outlet and then we have one back there as well. So we can, nice thing about that is you can plug it in wherever you want. So, and like I said, that's a 48 volt inverter going to the three batteries down here. This is a 12 volt inverter going to these 12 volts all in parallel. And then that one over there is like I said, the uh, patio pool um, door wall. And that's running right now. And if we wanted to, we could plug it into this one. This is another 48 volt system that's using these two batteries right now. Uh, we run freezer, freezer, refrigerator, 
freezer combo and another freezer over here. And this is now putting out heat over here. And we have heat in our garage. So right now we're running two mini splits in the house and one mini split out in the garage. And I run these the other day, yesterday, and it was at basically 13.1 on all these. And this bottom one, even though it says 12.9 when it's fully charged at 13.1, <laughs> for some reason the display says 12.9, but when I put a meter on all the batteries, it's 13.1. So there's something wrong with that display, LED display. But right now, they're all showing like 12.9 on the, uh, while it's running. And I ran it for about 20 to 30 minutes. And when I turned it off, they were all pretty close to 13 to 13.1. So it hardly touched the battery bank over here, running it for 20 to 30 minutes. So I could... Use those in the motorhome as well. Those aren't as dependable as these. I would recommend these. I wouldn't recommend these. They're just not as dependable. I'm mean, having problems with these. So that's one way that you can run your mini splits. And those are all 110 volt mini splits that I have where I can run those. And I have two installed upstairs, two downstairs. One in the garage here, this one's a 230 volt, and that's a 18,000 BTU. And then I have the one in the motorhome that is the exact same AUX brand that's um, 12,000 BTU, 120 volt. So, pretty nice, very uh, affordable to run these mini splits, even on the grid. Uh, right now, they're charging me 14.2 cents an hour, and it runs around six or 700 watts when it's running. So it's about an hour and a half, cost me 14.2 cents. That's not bad. And actually, downstairs, when I get up in the morning, I only run it for maybe two hours. So it's like 20 cents to heat my downstairs and then when the sun's up and running, I plug it into the solar. So I'm really only spending like 20 cents a day in the morning if I want to run it on that. If I wanted to, I could plug this one into this outlet over here, which is on this inverter right here. So like I said, I have this one on this side of the panel, which is right here for the sockets. And then over on this side is this side. There's the um, uh, 120 volt outlet down below. It's on this side. And the 120 volt outlet over here is on this side. So two separate sides. So I could plug it into this one and then the other one's running off of this side right here, so it'd be balanced. And I'd only be using like 1.5 kilowatts to run two mini splits to completely heat my downstairs. And that's what I've been uh, doing earlier. Um, I had both of them plugged in. Well, one's direct wired in the living room, and then this one's on a plug. So I like to do that to show people what you can do with it. Anyways, just wanted to do a quick video on these. Uh, the other thing I was going to say to you is if you're having a problem with an error, these things will only heat um, down to 34, 35 degrees. And if you're having a problem, there is a sensor up here. It's right, mine's located right here. And that sensor can get dirty or dusty right there and all you have to do is take and wipe it off with your hands or with a towel and then also if these screens get a lot of dust on them you can take them out wash them off 
and then dry them off and put them back in. And just be careful because, you know, they're reusable screens, but if you rough on them, you're going to put a hole in them and it's going to defeat the purpose keeping that dust out. So you have two screens. You got one there and one here that you can pull out. So, and I just cleaned these the other day. Couldn't take that long. Run it under hot water, rinse the dirt off. <coughs> but if you get an error like that, if you clean that and these two screens, and that should go away. There's also a temperature sensor outside on the coil. Sometimes that might get dirty from just being outside. Um, you can check that one too. But uh, a couple weeks ago when it was like 32 degrees, my um, inside unit, the same brand, Aux, uh, had an F1 on it. So I cleaned off that sensor and I cleaned the two screens, put it back on. But it was just because it was actually, it said 32 outside, but when I actually put a thermometer out there, it was like 28 on the ground or where the sensor is out there. And it would not produce any heat because it was just too cold. So when you get down like that, where it's close to freezing, these things might give you an F1 error. They're, they only work above 34, like 34 degrees. So when you get close to that freezing mark, they're not going to work. Now, if you wait until the sun comes up and the... Uh, Air temperature around that gets around 34, 35 degrees. Try it again, and more likely it'll work. But I had that problem. It just got too cold outside, and one of the units wouldn't work. Now, my premium worked in the living room, but the Aux brand didn't. So it just depends on your brand as to how low it'll go outside. So hope that is a helpful hint. Please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And we'll see you in the next video. Hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed 2024. Bye-bye.